Hello everybody, my name is Jared and today I am going to be reviewing for you Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow. Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow is a movie that takes place in an alternate universe where Ultron, you know, the robot that Ant-Man created in the comics but that Tony created in the MCU, has succeeded in killing off the Avengers and taking over the entire world. The only Avengers left are their children, which consist of James, Azari, Pym, Torin, and Barton. James is the son of Captain America and Black Widow. Pym is the son of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Azari is the son of Black Panther and I think Storm, because because he's got these electricity powers. Uh, Torin is the daughter of Thor, and Barton is the son of Hawkeye. I find this movie to be just okay. It does have its ups, but it Ups, but it does have its downs as well. Like, like one of them being that the fighting is really good, but most of it is just flat out talking. So, what happens in the movie? And then Ultron obviously gets a mind of its own, and he kills off all the Avengers, except for Thor, who left to take care of Asgard. And but Thor doesn't even come to help the Avengers at all. Kind of a jerk move. I mean, you, you've got an entire army up there with you. I don't know why you can't just send some, like, Valkyries down there to help help your fellow Avenger people, but you do you, man. You, man. The only Avenger to survive, as, as we know, is Iron Man, or Tony, who takes the Avengers kids to a remote, like, like, I, I don't know. It, it's not an island. It's, it's like a building, or... Something like that somewhere where, where, they, where, they will, where they will train until they can one day defeat Ultron. Except the years go by, they grow older, and they start to get restless. And that's when Vision, another Avenger who survived, uh, comes in and he's all battle damaged and stuff. Uh, Tony takes Vision down to an underground lair to fix him, and the kids, because they're all curious, they follow him. And while they follow him, James accidentally activates the Iron Avengers, which are basically, you know, robotic versions of the Avengers. Avengers. And by activating the Iron Avengers, Ultron, who's wired into all the technology in the world, except for that one building, somehow, he senses the Iron Avengers, and by doing that, he knows where they are now. So Ultron is very easily able to corrupt the Iron Avengers and get them to be on his side. I... Uh, while Vision takes the kids to escape in the Quinjet, uh, Tony suits up as Iron Man one last time and fights Ultron, but he ends up getting his butt handed down to him and he gets captured. While, while on the run to the Savage Land, and yeah, yeah that's a good idea, just take, just take the Avengers' kids to the Savage Land, where dinosaurs roam, Vision ends up, ends up shutting down. So they go to um, Ultra City, I think that it was called, to rescue Tony, but they end up getting their butts handed down to them there until they're rescued by Bart and Hawkeye's son. On. Hawkeye then agrees to help them rescue Tony, which they are actually pretty easily able to do, I thought, in my opinion, where they escape to the desert to recruit the Hulk, because as apparently Ultron is the only one that the Hulk even fears, or maybe it was the other way around, and Hulk's the strongest one there is, but Bruce Banner, the guy who is the Hulk, just refuses to help. So they activate the ship that they used to get head to the desert in the first place to lure Ultron to them, and after an epic battle with Ultron, the Iron Avengers, and the Hulk, who, um, you know, Hulk's out because he's angry and stuff, Ultron is defeated, eated, and after that, the, the Avengers kid just basically decide to, you know, save the world from the rest of Ultron's robots. And that's it. That's basically the entire movie. It's actually a pretty short movie, so that's why it was easy for me to summarize the plot really quickly. Like I said, the action scenes are really fun. It's got a lot of explosions and a lot of good choreography. Um, I thought that the music was sometimes good, sometimes it was bad, bad but the music music is just okay in the middle. And um, some of the characters in this movie are pretty good, like James and Azari, the son of Captain America and the son of Black Panther. They were the only two Avengers. I liked them because they were the most entertaining of the child Avengers. Like, Azari was pretty cool because of the whole electricity powers thing, and James was pretty cool because... Um, I, I don't know, he, he, he just seemed like the only child Avenger to me that actually wanted to kill Ultron. On And Ultron, actually, I thought, I thought that he was the best part of the entire movie. He is exactly what you would want from a villain who killed off the Avengers and actually managed to take over the world. Like, he compares himself to humans, always putting himself as superior. He's a threatening villain, he sounds scary, and there's even a part where he taunts James about how he killed Captain America first out of all the Avengers. So, 
So it really sucked when Ultron wasn't in the film as much as I would have wanted him to be in the film. Um, Tony Stark was a pretty good character, too. He's not the genius playboy billionaire guy that we all know and love from the MCU. He's mostly just the this, you know, this depressed old old man who thinks that he failed and stuff. But it's actually good in this one because, like, I'm going to compare this to Star Wars 9. Wait, was it Star Wars 9, 7, 8? Star Wars 8, actually. The, the last Jeff and I. And I, in that one, when Luke Skywalker becomes all depressed and old and stuff, it, uh, it it doesn't really make sense because, sure, Kylo Ren, like, killed off all your Jedi. That doesn't mean that the Force is entirely gone. You can always find more Jedi and maybe build a resistance. Like, that's what I would have wanted to see in that film. Now, in, in this film, uh, Next Avengers, it actually makes sense for Tony to be like that because he's actually failed. Ultron, a robot that he's created, he created Ultron in this movie as well. Ultron, a villain that he has created, has actually killed off all of his friends and his family and has taken over the world. So it would make sense for Tony to change into that person and not hunt, just like, and not turn into that just because of one hunt failure. Failure. So yeah. And that's about all the positives I have for this movie. The negatives I have in this movie include, like, you know, the fight scenes are good, so it sucks when they're only three minutes long and most of the movie is nothing but talking and talking and talking. And that's not what you would want from an Avengers film. Avengers film. You, you don't want nothing but talking and talking and talking the whole time because that's basically what it is. Is you, you have the most fun with the fight scenes, and so when the talking comes, you don't really pay attention at all whatsoever. And the rest of the characters aren't even really that good. Like, Torin, who's supposed to be, like, this strong person, like, she goes from a strong person to a depressed person to back to a strong person, long person, and I don't know. I, I, I don't know why. I really don't know why. But I didn't find her character to be as entertaining as, as, as Ultron's at all. She... Oh, no, no one in this movie comes close to Ultron. Ultron's best character in this movie. In this movie. And then you've got Barton, and he he's not even a, a memorable character. He shows up only halfway through the movie, and he's just that whole, like, I lead a resistance, I'm all edgy, because my father, father died. Like, I gotta be strong and tough. Like, we've all seen that character somewhere before. And then Pim... Pim was just so, so freaking annoying. He would do nothing but talk and talk and talk and talk and, and, and his voice is just really loud in your ears and he points out the obvious and it just, I, I, I just didn't really like him. There's a scene where, where when they meet the Hulk, he's Bruce Banner and Bruce Banner's all old now and he like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. He just says like, that's not the Hulk, he's weak. I don't know if that was supposed to be funny, but I, I just didn't like him. I did not like him at all whatsoever. Yeah, I want to talk about Thor, the big jerk in this film, who abandons his, his Avengers brothers and leaves his daughter with the Avengers. I mean, I don't know why you couldn't have just kept her up there in Asgard to train her to become an Avenger. Like, that would have made a lot more sense if she showed up halfway through the movie, movie instead of Barton showing up halfway through the movie. But yeah, Thor just, he just sucks. Like, you let, you let your Avengers brother, others die. You didn't? You, you didn't decide to help them from Asgard, which you totally could have. You just let them die. Thor, you suck. And that's all I have to say about this movie. So, in conclusion, the movie is just okay. Some of the characters are good. Some of them is bad. The music is okay. Fight scenes are good. Talking sucks. And with all of that being said, I'm going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not subscribe down below, maybe leave a like, and I will see you in the next video.